What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and once in a while I'll throw in other whiskey related content. Today I want to do a list with you guys. We're going to be going over my top five sherried 15 year olds. Stick around. All right, so we're going over five sherried 15 year olds that I absolutely love today. That does come with a bit of an asterisk though. Uh, these are five sherried 15 year olds that I have tried. Obviously I need to have tried them but also ones that I have here. So inevitably, some whiskeys did get left off this list for various reasons. Also, you know, we gotta keep in mind tastes change, whiskey changes with time. So this list might look totally different next year or in two years, but here and now in 2022, this is my list. That was disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two is that I chose five sherry forward whiskeys. There are a lot of whiskeys out there with a touch of sherry where it doesn't really dominate the profile or it's not very forward. I opted to leave those out even though they might be fantastic whiskeys. So that would be stuff like Old Pulteney 15 or Redbreast 15. Fantastic whiskeys, but I think the sherry is a little bit more subtle in those ones. And I wanted to give you not necessarily sherry bombs or sherry monsters, but sherry forward profiles. Other things got left out because maybe they're discontinued or maybe they're really hard to find or they're batch releases, that kind of thing. So I didn't include stuff like a um, good example would be Balvenie 15 single barrel beautiful whiskey some of the best sherried whiskey i've ever had depending on which release you get but it's hard to find it's more expensive and i seem to remember someone telling me that's discontinued now so not on the list and finally we've got the whiskeys that i just have not tried yet so a good example of that would be something like the glen turret 15. that's a bottle i would love to get my hands on i'd love to try it i hear good things but it's just not sold in my market so of course i'm not going to include it one last thing i want to say up front is that these are ordered in terms of preference but that I like every single whiskey on the list that I'm about to share with you guys. So it's not like number one is good and number five is bad. Number five is excellent. Number one, I just happen to like a little bit more, but every single thing here is recommended. So there we go. Uh, and I guess that's it. Let's not waste time. Let's jump into our list. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So I wanna start things off with an honorable mention. This is a Diageo release, which sounds like it would probably be something that's very popular, that's mass marketed. Um, I guess the latter is true, but this is from one of their more obscure series. It's from the Flora and Fauna collection, and it's a beautiful 15 year old. I'm talking about the Ben Rennes 15. This one is meaty. It's got a very distinctive character. It actually makes me a little bit sad that this is the only official bottling that we get from the brand. At least I think it is, but luckily there's a slew of independent bottlings out there, and those are often worth checking out as well. In the meantime, we have this one. It's an excellent whiskey. I do wish that our ABV was a little bit higher on this one, but excellent nonetheless. Ben Rennes 15. Okay, so I think my number five pick might be a little bit controversial just because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who'd have this as their number one or maybe their number two. They'd put it higher on the list. Now, I have reviewed this before and I gave it a really high score. And actually, in my opinion, I gave it too high of a score. I'd bring that score down a couple points nowadays but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, I'm talking about the Tamdu 15. So Tamdu has had a resurgence over the last few years. They have an excellent lineup. All sherried whiskeys, both the 12 and the 15, are very good. Now, apparently, they have an 18-year-old that just came out. I haven't tried that yet. I'm looking forward to someday. Hopefully, the price is fair on that one. But in the meantime, I'm happy sticking with my 15-year-old here. It's got that beautiful marshmallowy note that I always love in Tamdu. A uh, good helping of sherry, of course. It's just really solid stuff, so it's highly recommended. Some very nice, very luxurious flavors in this one. So my number five is Tamdu 15. All right, for number four, we've got another beauty. This one's from one of Speyside's most famous distilleries. I will say this up front, though. If you are an American viewer, this whiskey is not sold in your market. That being said, I have heard that depending on your local state laws, you might be able to have this one shipped to you. So there is that. Uh, the bottle I'm talking about here is the Glen Farkless 15. Great stuff, a little bit old school. This one might not blow your mind, but it's just really solid, really delicious whiskey. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best offering from the affordable Glen Farkless core range. Uh, classic sherry flavors in here. We have uh, banana bread and Christmas cake and cinnamon and fruits and raisins. And again, it's a little bit old school. It's a no frills beauty, this one. And also it doesn't hurt that this is the cheapest whiskey on this list, or I guess this and the Ben Rennes will say same ballpark, but we're getting a great whiskey here at a very fair price tag. So wonderful value on this one. And you know, this is one that I go way back with. I've been drinking this for 10 plus years, classic profile, really good stuff. So number four, Glenn Farkless 15. 
All right, so I wanna keep that old school theme going with this one. This is a relatively new release, and prior to the brand revamping their lineup, everything they used to put out was a vintage release. Nowadays, everything is age stated. A lot of you might already have figured out what I'm talking about. The whiskey I've got with me here is the Ball Blair 15. Like the Glen Farkless, this one has a bit of an old school charm to it, despite being a newer release. It's not too sweet, it's not too cloying. It's a very grounded, as Rafi would say, it's a very jobbing 15 year old with some undeniable quality. And this is also the newest whiskey on this list. Now, I don't think it's very popular yet, but it might be starting to pick up a bit of traction, a bit of momentum, I suppose time will tell there. This is the only whiskey on this list that I have yet to review, so I should definitely get on top of that. Really good stuff. Number three is Ball Blair 15. So my number two pick is definitely gonna piss some people off. Anytime this distillery is mentioned in whiskey circles, some people sneer at it, some people attack it, some people rush to its defense, and I see why it's so controversial, but I don't wanna get into any of that today. I just wanna show you what I've got, and what I've got is the Macallan 15. Now Macallan, for all their faults, do make excellent whiskey, but the thing is, a lot of their stuff comes in with lower ABVs. This one is a 43% ABV whiskey, and I do wish it was 46. Also, a lot of their stuff, as we all know, is very prohibitively priced. This was affordable when I first bought it, and I don't mean cheap. It was affordable. It was on par with a lot of its competition. But nowadays, about a year and a half after I bought it, the price on this one has gone up by about 20 to 30 US dollars. And honestly, I'm not sure that I'd be willing to pay the markup that they're asking for it nowadays, so I guess I'll just have to savor what's left of this bottle. And savoring it won't be hard because it's absolutely delicious stuff. We have classic Macallan oranges and spices. As usual, great flavors, very luxurious. Now, whether or not you like this brand, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best 15-year-olds on the market, despite that lower ABV. So I'm putting it at number two, Macallan 15. All right, we're down to the last one. This is the number one pick, and I don't think a lot of you will have seen this one coming. It's from a brand that a lot of people love. It's very famous. It has a lot of respect within the whiskey community, but this particular release doesn't have a lot of like hype or buzz around it, and I'm not sure why. It definitely deserves it. It's an amazing whiskey. I've got the Ben Romick 15. And you know, this is kind of an odd list because there's quite a few whiskeys here that come in at 43% ABV, including this one. Everything on this list that's 43% should be 46, and this one's no exception. But even with its lower ABV, this is one of the most treasured whiskeys in my collection. And it's actually not even that expensive. It's a relatively affordable 15-year-old. Our profile here is modern, it's delicate. This is a much gentler Benromic than you might be used to, but I can't get enough of this stuff. Incredible reachability here, uh, very rounded, very pretty stuff. So a wonderful whiskey, definitely one you should check out if you haven't already. My top pick for a Sherry 15 year old is Benromic 15. All right guys, that's it, that's the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously I do wanna hear from you. Do you agree, do you disagree? Let me know why. And let me know what your list would look like. If you're doing a list of Sherry 15 year old whiskeys, what would you include? How would you rank them? Put that down in the comments, I'd love to read it. Before moving on, I want to acknowledge that I'm sure this video probably rubbed some of you the wrong way, and there's a couple of reasons why that might have happened. Number one, because I included McAllen on this list, and McAllen is always a hot button topic. Again, people start tearing into them or defending them, it becomes this whole thing. But I included it because I absolutely love the whiskey and I do not apologize for that. Number two is that I have a lot of whiskeys on this list that come in at 43%, and I want to talk about that. As I mentioned earlier, every whiskey on this list that comes in at 43% should be released at 46%. It's a shame they aren't. And that speaks to how limited our choices are, especially when it comes to widely available official bottlings of Sherry 15 year olds. And you know, I don't want to start a rant at the tail end of this video, but it sucks and we'll leave it at that. Anyway, I guess that's it for the video. We did cover some great whiskeys today, even if some of them are a little bit controversial. Check them out if you haven't, and if you have checked them out, let me know your thoughts on them down below in the comments. And yeah, we can do the usual Patreon and like and comment and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.